Okay, Chris and Jason, welcome. How are you doing, Carl? I'm all right, pal. Yeah, very disappointing to be not playing in this match today. We had our Stonia. chances, but unfortunately didn't take them. Whose fault is it? <laughs> I'm joking. Don't want you fighting in here. I'll take the dairy this time. Yeah, this should be a, an exciting match here. Um, Philippines came from 5-0 down yesterday against USA and, um, you know, Estonia were a little bit fortunate last night against ourselves, so I'm um, excited to see what they're going to bring today. Yeah, they wasn't very clever in the first match. There was 5-1 down and somehow grinded a result back. And then they played quite well against us yesterday, Jason, but... Thank you. It's the first wreck. The Philippines are a different prospect. Don't have a break. The man on your screens, Dennis Grave. We call him Graybo. One of the biggest characters you're ever likely to meet. If things don't go well here, well, you could see some fireworks. Not a bad break there. He's got a clear shot, the one ball. It doesn't have much to do with the cue ball. It's the two balls right next to it. Yeah, your first shot here um, of the match and you're having to play a kind of jacked up off the rail a little bit. So be a tough shot for Mark here. Yeah, it's just very important to keep still on this shot. Hit the center of the cue ball. And that was a bad miss. I think he'd be fortunate there. Cue balls landed behind the free ball. I don't think he's quite left any shot. Yeah, always difficult, as you said, when queuing off the rail. And this is Jeffrey De Luna. This is the type of thing he likes to do. Very flamboyant player. Nice jump shot there. Wasn't the easiest of jump shots as he was, as he was stretching. Before Jeffrey was a professional pool player, he was a dancer in a club. shot there from Roberto part of the pocket yeah they've been putting a lot of practice in over the last few days every time you go down to the practice table the Filipinos are on it oh that's no good false shots Balance. yeah that wasn't a good shot there from Jeffrey he um he got into the cue ball too much. Yeah, he does possess a lot of cue power, does Jeffrey? He makes them type of shots look very effortless. But they need to cut them mistakes out. I know it's early doors, but you don't want to give your opponents too much confidence. And if he's landed straight on that seven ball, it's a bad positional shot. Any kind of angle he can get on this eight, easy enough. I think he's going to play the eight in the corner he's standing at now. Yeah, he had enough angle there, Chris. This nine ball for Estonia to get the first 
rack on the board. Extension, please. Tim Estonia. So, Dennis Grave smashes the nine in for a one rack to no lead. Fellas, don't want to go on about last night's match too much. What's your thoughts? Uh, no, I thought we played okay, but in the middle of the match, we had a couple of opportunities to get in front, and, you know, we made a couple of mistakes, and towards the end of the match, it, it cost <coughs> us. Um, it happens, so you just got to take it on the chin and move on. Yeah, it was very unlucky at the end to scratch. What a way to finish the match and uh, the guys on your screens now. Well, they've got another tough match. But they've won the first rack. Mark Magic to break in the, the second. second. It's done it a break. <laughs> Leading one now. They were breaking um, pretty good yesterday at the start of the match. They weren't hitting the break too hard. They were cutting it, trying to control the one over the corner. And uh, it was working out pretty good for them. Um, towards the end of the match, they, they broke dry a couple of times because of the hitting the break too soft. The same break again. Yeah, I don't think they've got a clear shot at the one. May not go in the corner. We could see Dennis bank the one ball into the opposite corner pocket. Or well, he's got a real easy safety where he can stun the one ball, knock it round five rails and stick the cue ball in behind the pink four. I think he might bank this ball, Chris. He had a similar shot yesterday in the match, and uh, he made it. So Extension calls. Wouldn't surprise me if he went for the same shot. Yeah, extension called. You get one extension per rack. Just doesn't want to pop the one in the side pocket. That's a good shot there. And this isn't easy to hit. But if there is one team that are renowned for getting out of snookers and kicking the ball, it's the Philippines. <coughs> Going to try and go two rails here. Just hit above the centre pocket. Doesn't want to hit it too hard because it will straighten up. Foul. And that's what happened. No contact. Yeah, I didn't Bottom. think he had to hit that Stop. ball that hard there, Chris. I thought he would have just played it at a nice speed and uh, he, he did the opposite and absolutely smashed a 100 mile an hour. Yeah, the harder he played that shot, the less chance he had of hitting the one ball, in my opinion. And once again, Estonia get a glorious yeah. opportunity. Yeah, one thing that Estonia would love to do is get off to a dream start in this match. Okay for Mark, he's a, a tall lad. She'll be able to reach this one with ease. Are you too aware how old Mark Maggi is? I am not aware of how old he is. Christopher? No, I would hazard a guess at about 23. Jason? 
I um, think maybe around 26. He's 21, I thought he was about 30. Wow. It's a tough laugh, being a pool player, that's for sure. Yeah, and that's a poor no, shot no. if he's not on the five. He should have been drawing that and coming the other side of the green six, widening the angle so he had more opportunity to land on the five ball. I think he can still make it, Chris. Nice shot there from Dennis. Yeah, and a nice cannon as well. It left a perfect angle to get onto the seven. Does it slide past the nine, or is he going to play a seven-nine combo? I think the seven might go, Chris. I'm not sure about playing the combo after this ball. I think if he can get straight on the seven, they will be playing the seven straight into the corner. Well, they could have done with that rolling a little bit more. He's going away from the eight ball. It does go. He's going to have to play it very slowly. Well, he pounded it in. A lot of movement on that shot there from Dennis. Maybe feeling a little bit edgy at the start of this match. Yeah, of course, these guys know what tough opponents they've got in the Philippines. Both of these players from the Philippines have actually lost in the final of the World Cup Tour, but with different Seems partners. Wins the second wreck. Kick shot again now from Roberto, which gave Team Estonia ball in hand, and now they are 2 0 to the good. Yeah, and it was a long way away, Jason. It wasn't as if he got close to it in the one ball. Yeah, like you said before, it, the harder you hit that shot, it's going to straighten up more, in, and, and that's what he did, and he scratched in the side pocket. Yeah, let's not forget. Philippines was down 5-0 to USA last night. In a race to seven as well. Now it's a race to nine from the quarterfinals and the semi-finals is a race to nine. The final will be a race to 11. I think it's race to 10, Carl. Maybe you had a little mistake there because you haven't been playing for a few years. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, break. I'm sure it's race to 11, uh, 10, <laughs> not 11. <laughs> they changed it again. It is a race to 11, so... Yeah, we don't need to worry about that, Jason. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true, Chris. <laughs> What a break. Very unfortunate not to have a shot on the two ball. Controlled that cue ball beautifully. Yeah, very nice solid hit there from Dennis. And uh, unfortunate the two ball's gone to the top rail. Yeah, did he notice he's broke from the opposite side of the table today, Jason? He was breaking from, from his right-hand side yesterday, and now he's breaking from the left. I think he's been watching the matches that's um, been already on today, and I think everybody who's been playing has been breaking from that side. So we've already seen one break each from both players, and both made the wing ball. So the table's Which breaking pretty good. Yeah, he might be looking to tie the four ball up with the nine here. 
your options, guys. I'm not really a fan of that shot. He's left a, a very easy chance to hook them. He's going to try and clip off the right-hand side of the two ball with right-hand spin. And try and spin the cue ball in behind the four and eight, the five and eight. Yeah, I'm a fan of what you're trying to suggest, Chris. Try and tie a ball up with your push out as well. Yeah, and Jeff didn't hit that good, hit it way too thick. I think he's got away with it though, Chris. Yeah, I think he can hit the two ball, but not yeah, much he can do about it. I'm not too sure about that. I think the eight's just it's a blocker, it's one of those ones. You have to have a real close look at it. Yeah, he yeah, may have to go three rails. Extension. Extension called. There's a lot of good things that can happen kicking it three rails from behind, Chris. If he hits it hard enough, he could get the cue ball close to the six ball and the two ball down towards the nine. Yeah, and if he hits it thin, it could be a 2-8 combo. Well, I'm very surprised at this, because all, all they're going to do here... Foul shots. And that's a terrible shot. Ball in. We know he was trying to tie the four ball up. Start the clock, please. He's over it that by about four or five inches. Hmm? Very, um... Foul shots. Very surprised at those last couple of shots from Estonia. The push out and then um, Foul this shots. shot. So. Well, the problem with it, Jason is even if he ties the four and the nine up, they would just pick the cue ball up and hit the two into the four nine and snooker him behind the eight, and it's opened everything up again. Extension called. Yeah, uh, this wasn't a good rack from Estonia. They've made a couple of bad decisions after the break, and it uh, looks like it's going to cost them the rack. Yeah, pulls the game with percentage and they've not played this rack very good with the percentage at all. Dennis Grave likes to sit and stew over the, his bad shots, doesn't he? You can see it all over his face. Yeah, and i tell you what I noticed, Carl, was Dennis's partner, Mark, he seems to want to tell Dennis what to do a lot of the time, and Dennis is the better player of the two. We'll keep an eye on that then, because after this simple nine from Superman, as they call him in the Philippines, Philippines will have their first rack on the board of this quarterfinals. They trail this match 2-1.
Estonia versus the Philippines in our final quarter final of this year's 2021 World Cup of Pool. Thank you, Default Frank. The Philippines, Philippines trail. are trailing by 2-1. Two two one. One. We're about to Under see Winter. Jeffrey the Luna's break. Yeah, he was hitting these breaks real hard yesterday, Carl, and he was, he was getting a lot of success towards the end of that match against USA. So we're going to see it again now. I'll tell you what, I wish we had a speed gun to see how hard he's hitting him, I really do. He's made four balls on this one. Yeah, I've been saying that for quite a while, Carl, to a few people. I'd like to see the speed gun back, because they used to use it about 15 years ago in the, I think it was the European Masters. I think you should go and have a word with Emily, pal. Yeah, I think it would be fun to see how hard um, the players are hitting the break and uh, maybe we should have a speed gun where you can't hit below a certain number. What would that number be realistically? Do we actually? Would you actually have an idea? Yeah, I think around 16, 17 miles an hour. And how hard do you think the loon is hitting him if he keeps breaking like that? About 24, 25 miles an hour. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, it's an interesting topic. Yeah, when you think about the distance a cue ball travels to where it hits the one ball, that's actually some acceleration. Extension called. Yeah, and this is why it's some acceleration, because he jumps up into the sky and he's got that big snap going down on the, the cue. But it still wasn't a break and run. Is Graybo going to chip off this ball or is he going to go for it? Nice shot there from Dennis. Very oh. nice. Yeah, that's a brilliant shot there. Couldn't have played that any better. I was very surprised that Roberto didn't cut the two ball in the corner and go up and down the table back to where the cue ball is now, Chris. It was kind of a natural angle to play that shot on the two. A good shot there on the three ball. Leaves Dennis a simple six, guaranteed position to get on the eight, and nothing to do to get on the nine. Yeah, in 2019, when Estonia played in the World Cup of Pool, they lost the match, Hill Hill, and well, we were lucky to see Mark Maggi again because there was a big fallout between these two. And I think this year, I think Mark's come here. I think he's played some good stuff, to be fair. I think he's held himself well. Yeah, Chris, what do you think? Yeah, he's been quite impressive, to be honest. A lot better than he was last the last time they played together. Yeah, they, they're definitely performing better than they did um, in 2019 and uh, yeah, 3-1 to, to Estonia. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. Well, we loved watching Jeff break for the Philippines, but it doesn't matter in the end. Estonia get get, get the right, they go 3-1 in front. Uh, yeah, they had to, to try to play safety there, and I don't think it looks good, of course, but I think it's not really necessary to break that hard anymore. Maybe he will change it after, but a nice little shot there from Dennis to get uh, back into the game. Yeah, I mean, the Philippines were 5-0 down against the US, so they know, we know they can come back. Do you expect that to happen again? Uh, first of all, I don't think they will. Uh, that uh, Estonia will take that big lead in this game. Um, I think they will fi fight even harder today, the Philippines, and I expect them to win, but I think it's going to be a tight one. Yeah, things could, could go all the way again. Currently 3-1 to Estonia. Referee for this match, yep. Marcel Eckert's famous snooker referee, but he's, he's now come over to the dark side, and he's doing a lot Currently of cool events for us. Three one. Yeah, I think he's a good referee, Carl, in my opinion. You know, he's very, uh, very professional. 
So let's see what Mark Maggi can do on the break. He's breaking from the right hand side as he looks. Yeah, he's trying this soft cut break and it's very dangerous. Yeah, and he's had a result where four and five ball getting in the way of the one. At the softer you hit that there, you see the wing ball was going towards the pocket, but got kicked away. I think he has to um, refigure out that break and try and just hit it head on with a little bit more power. Yeah, he's looking to push out here and leave a jump shot. And if Jeff would be the one who would play it because he's left-handed, so he'll be able to play the jump shot a lot easier than Roberto would. I don't think there's any value in playing the jump shot because to get from the one to the two, uh, jumping that ball is very difficult. So I think Roberto's talked him out it and they're going to push out down here and leave a Your cross bank nice. on the one ball. Yeah, I don't like that shot he's played there, Jason. It's give Den Dennis a real opportunity to cross bank the one. Start a cup, please. He has got another option. He can kick off the top rail, hit the one ball, half ball, send it towards the three and the nine. And the cue ball will land behind the five and four. Yeah, you could just see he's pointing at that pocket with his cue. Now, they do say when the cue ball and the object ball is in a line with the pocket, there's a double hit, so he's going to have to spin it in. Would you play it with right hand spin, Jason? Or would you play yeah, it with I think, left? I think he's going to have to draw this ball a little bit with the right hand spin. The cue ball is going to come top rail, side rail, and back to where the cue ball is now tracking down towards the nine. But like Chris said, this may be a double hit, so they've gave it back to Team Philippines. Yeah, I think I'd be kicking this off the top rail, Jason. It's not a difficult kick shot. It's just getting it safe that's the problem. These guys are playing the cross bank. These play a lot of one pocket, these two in the USA, and uh, Roberto's become really good at one pocket. Yeah, and he's left him an opportunity here. Not easy by any means. He didn't play a shot yet, did he? No, you just played the push yet. It's your turn, then. I didn't think that shot was no, on Chris. I said, uh, I looked at him was on Chris with yeah. inside. Yeah, he might play safe here, just bank the, the one ball off Extension the top rail, place. side rail. I think put the one ball down to the bottom rail, close to the two ball, and leave the cue ball up the table. Might be going, trying to chip it in. Yeah, I think that's the right shot, and he's played it very well. Yeah, it's a promising start, this, for the Estonians. They were second favourites in last night's match. The second favourites in this match, but they're going along nicely. We've got Philippines on the ropes. Well, it looks like Jeff is going to jump over the side of the five into the rail and try and kick the one up the table and hook him. Extension, Extension please. Very risky, because if he hits half ball on the one, the cue ball and the one ball will track up the table. What a shot that is. He actually jumped it and swerved the cue ball when it landed. Yeah, there was a lot of body movement going on there from Jeffrey. Yeah, it nearly landed on the table. Yeah, and I actually fancy him to make this one, believe it or not. Very nice. Very nice shot there from Roberto Gomez. They really are so clever on the pool table and they often come out with these type of shots. And 
That's why they're a fan's favourite, just the style of pool they play. Yeah, and after the two shots that they've just made there, don't be surprised if they miss this three ball. You know, he's jacking down on it, so he's making this very difficult. He didn't even go for it. Or did he go for it? Trick shots in this rack. That is incredible how that ball's gone in there. Yeah, no offer of apology. You don't see that from the Filipinos. They never put their hand up and say sorry. <laughs> I think um, they know luck's part of the game and um, it always happens. So, you know, if it happened all the time, you would just be apologizing to your opponent. So I think they just let it go and get on with the game. Oh, and he scratched. What a terrible mistake there from Roberto Gomez. Start the clock, please. That's incredible. Two amazing shots and then one trick shot, shall we say. And then a terrible shot there from Roberto Gomez to scratch in the side. And that could be a big rack in this game. Yeah, so things are running along nicely from the lads from Estonia. Very important, of course, to just keep the heat the Filipinos, you could just see Gomez in the background, you know, Gene, his partner up, saying, come on, we can, we can still do this. Yeah, and Dennis has played another poor shot there. Can easily make the seven, but it would have been a lot easier if he wasn't on the rail. Yeah, so, you just look at this eight ball he's face with, it's a little thin one, it's going, it's going to play into a, a nice pocket, so he could slide in, but he should have been better on this, this is a big moment coming up. Yeah, he should be making this Cal, straight in the out of the pocket, and perfect onto the nine ball, this nine ball for a 4-1 lead. Sonia. Wentz the ring. Who's at the match? It's a hard look. I'm not even. Mask, that's not in me. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. This was the undoing of the rack. We've seen a couple of nice shots. This was a jump swerve. Look at the cue ball. And then, unfortunately, hooked his partner and then he kicks this two ball yes, into the corner. Surprised he didn't go for that call in the, in the, in the centre. Yeah, and that was a fluke. And then this was a tricky pot, it was long, he had to hold the cue ball. And there you see, the cue ball, ball disappears. Ball in hand. And Estonia take a 4-1 <laughs> lead. Unbelievable. You can hear Jeffrey in the background, unbelievable, he says to Roberto. Yeah, that's because in the arena there is TV screen, so they can see what you've just seen. And when it's a bad shot, you look up and it's like double whammy. It's turning to break. Leading by 4x2. Estonia leading 4-1 and Dennis Grape to break. Look at this for a break. Well, it was a nice break, good solid hit. Pays to hit him good and he's been rewarded with a nice chance, the, the nine ball was close. That nine ball has, was nearly very similar to Joshua Filler's nine ball in the last match. The same thing happened, that same ball kicked the nine ball into the side pocket to give them a big lead and uh, 
It could have been different there if that had gone in, Carl. Yeah, you know, you, you two have been in this situation in, in many pool matches and tournaments. You know how important it is when you're playing quality opponents. They've got to run these balls out. They've got to keep the pressure on the Philippines. And there's going to be a little break after this rack. So if they were to make a mistake and the Philippines end up winning this rack, they've got a couple of minutes to think about it. It hurts. So this is a big rack, this. Yeah, he's played a good first shot there. Dead straight on the three and the centre to get to the four ball. this four ball and stun between the seven and the five and shoot the five ball in the same pocket. Got to make sure he doesn't land straight on the five though. Always try and leave yourself an angle. And that's okay. I think he's got a slight little angle. He might have to spin it out with right hand spin. Could have done with a bit more angle. Yeah, like you said there, Chris, just try and give yourself a little angle, and he has a little bit, but like you said, he would have liked to have been a little bit more. Extension. Extension called. And it's very important that he lands low on this seven ball to leave a natural angle for the cue ball to go up the table for the eight. Doesn't want to be straight on the seven. Fine there, I think Graybo milked that one a little bit. Trying to make his partner feel bad about the previous shot, but looked pretty good to me. His partner doesn't look, um, last couple of times I'd seen him play, he looked a little bit edgy when he was playing, but he doesn't look um, that type of player anymore. Maybe he's been playing a lot more with Dennis and they feel more comfortable. Yeah, and he's played a wonderful shot there. Absolutely perfect on the eight ball. And just the eight and nine to take a 5-1 lead going into the break. I'm not quite sure why you keep up at the clock. I mean, this is a simple nine ball. Well, 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 the nine balls down, Estonia five, Pool Giants, the Philippines, one.
seven frack, to install into brake, leading by five frack to one. Matt Maddie will brake in the seventh rack. He's got to be feeling pretty good about himself at the minute. It's a race to nine. They're just over halfway there. Oh, he's changed sides now. He's, he's off to the other side, and I think we might see him put a little bit more speed on this break here, Chris. Yeah, another good break. Cue ball getting kicked up the table. So, no clear shot from the two. I think he was a little bit in fear of the cue ball getting kicked into the corner. But we're probably going to see a push out here. see a push to a kick shot yeah the only problem with that Jason is the Filipinos are so good at kicking the ball that you're probably going to be snookered when you come back to the table yeah that's that's true Chris but when you're 5-1 down and you're kicking at balls and trying to create something and make something happen you know um, it's very tough so when you've got a big lead it's you become comfortable with doing shots like that yeah and of course you know, they've got to push out somewhere, so where do you push to? Of course, if you're new to watch out pool, push out call. after the break, the incoming player, you can always play a push out, you can do what you want. Obviously, you can't roll Your the cue ball in the pocket. You can even pot the nine in certain cases, you do see that, that just goes back on the spot. Yeah, I'm not sure about that shot, Carl. It's. Uh, for me, that's not a good push-out. He's got an opportunity to spin the cue ball in behind the seven ball off three rails. Oh, that's tricky, isn't it? Just because of that pocket. That pocket's it's pretty scary going up there. I like just floating the two ball over towards the four and leaving the cue ball on the opposite side rail behind the nine. Yeah, that's probably the correct shot to play. He has got a big enough target to get him behind. Surprise me if you see him going for something very tough. But he does like to play flamboyant shots, doesn't he? Jeffrey DeLuna. And that's why he's going up towards this pocket. Well, it was a great effort. It wasn't far away. Yeah, I didn't like that shot there, Carl. It was very, very tricky. And uh, the cue ball to get it behind the seven had to be absolutely perfect. Yeah, he has got a, a good safety here. He can play the two ball into the side of the three and kind of try and plant the three onto the nine. The two will stay where the three is and the cue ball should go up the table. He's got the eight as a blocker. Just like that. Good cue ball. Yeah, good cue ball there. Really pays off. Just makes the next shot that bit more difficult. They're looking good here, Estonia. Raybo smiling and his partner. You know good things are happening when that's going on. Yeah, and Roberto's looking to bank the two up the table and put the cue ball in behind the three or the nine. Got to be a little bit careful. He's hit it perfect. He's left the gap. Left the Watford. That was the only danger. I like playing the two ball up towards the side rail. The seven would be in the way. And now, what a chance once again for Estonia. Yeah, I think he's spot on there, shot maker Mellon. I mean, maybe he did try and play that and he just missed it. And what Chris is saying is if the two ball goes on that side rail, you've got the insurance policy. Now, whose shot is it? It's Graybo's shot on the two ball. The shot clock got him there. He, um, he rushed that one. As soon as he held that three or four seconds left, he gave it a quick stroke and he overcut that ball by quite a bit there, Christopher. I'll tell you one thing we've not seen a lot of this week. Full length table banks, have we? Just don't seem to be there, do they? No one's going for them or 
I don't know if it's just a coincidence or, or what, Jay. I seen one yesterday yes. with Extension Omar part. Al Shaheen with the bridge. It was a very good shot to get him back in the game. They were <laughs> five three down, and uh, that one was pretty sweet. But like you said, you've not seen a lot of those banks go in this week. Yeah, and, that, and Billy Thorpe is renowned for being, you know, a, a splendid bank pool player. He played one the other day, and I swear to honestly, how it didn't go in. It was so close, and it just shows you these last couple of years, Rasson have tweak this table so the pockets are not as forgiving they still need to be forgiving because otherwise you can't play nine ball yeah what a roll he's had there missed the two ball by quite some distance and got a lovely flick off the four not a tough ball to hit problem being if he goes two rails and hits the back of the two the cue ball could scratch in the corner I would never be jumping this ball, Chris. It's too close to the pocket. Yeah, and I mean, he could actually make the nine ball if he hits it this good. Has he fluked it? I think he has, you know. And, and the, the cue, cue ball's, ball's in the corner. In. Oh, my. Well, there's some luck going off in this match. Well, it pays to hit. Um, Mr. Maggi hit it, and look at this. You do see some wonderful flukes at times on a 9b5 pool table. Not only has he fluked it though, Cal, he's landed perfect on the three in the side pocket to get to the four. Nice shot there from Dennis to get Mark into position for the four ball. And yeah, that was a massive fluke there. Yeah, it was a big fluke, but the Philippines have had plenty of shots in this rack. Nine ball, it's a very cruel game, Carl. And uh, when you're on the receiving end of it, it's not good sitting in your chair and watching on. Well, obviously, I'm just a pundit now, so I don't have to worry about all these type of things anymore. Are you sure? Oh, yeah, this week I do, I mean. Sorry, I do apologise. Yeah, I'm not convinced you haven't been practising the way you've been playing. I'm just a YouTube player these days, that's all. Yeah, I feel if you've not you've not been playing many tournaments, Carl, that I feel um, you've been doing a little bit of pull on YouTube, and I think it's still in you that you can still play a little bit, and you've got that confidence in you to to just rock up and play like you haven't played. Yeah, I mean, I said in one of the interviews, I think the fact that I've been doing a few things on YouTube, it's helped me, you know get a feel for the big ball again Chris knows obviously Jason used to play English 8 ball but Chris still plays a bit of both and the sheer size difference in the in the ball can catch you out but I didn't feel completely out of water and Mr Madge not feeling out of water this nine ball Estonia. hits six to one to Estonia well we didn't see this coming did we guys so the Philippines will have to do what they did yesterday to stand any chance of reaching the semi-finals. They're five down against six, racks to one down against Estonia. Albin Ocean, I must hold my hand up. I didn't expect this, did you? No, absolutely not. And, uh, well, it's a hard time for them right now. Uh, they finally got a little bit of a, a safety going and then the big fluke of Moggy with the jump shot. Uh, tough time for them, yeah. Intriguing rack, that one. I just got the impression if the Philippines pulled one back there, then we might have seen a surge but now they've got it all to do at, at, at six, six one. Yeah, they just got to wait for the next chance and take it like uh, they did yesterday. So uh, they, they know it from yesterday and hopefully they can do it better. That is the key, isn't it? We know yeah. they can do it. Yeah, we saw it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's intriguing. Let's see how they get on. Can Estonia do it? Back to the YouTuber. Thank you, Michael. And Alvin, of course. Alvin Back Ocean, the still the defending Estonia champion. by six frames to one. Until tomorrow night. And they will break. Yes, he's he's up there holding on to that one uh, for a, for another day, and then uh, someone else is turning, maybe a two-time winner coming up, Mr. Boys and Mr. Appleton. Well, it is remarkable what Austria have done, hasn't it? Last three finals they've been to. That is that is some achievement. break once again from Dennis nicely on the one two ball next to it 
very nice break there from Dennis. He's been hitting the balls great in the, this met, uh, match, and uh, I think he's uh, probably improved a little bit from yesterday because yesterday he wasn't hitting them as good as that. Yeah, so Mark's got to cue this nicely. Make sure you don't quit on the shot. Maybe even play a drag shot, we'll see. Yeah, had a little bit of drag on it. Played it into the right side of the pocket. So he swallows it up. Yeah, and he just wants to leave the cue ball roughly where it is now after potting the two. That avails him nice position from three to four. Not bad, Chris. Um, maybe like to have been a little bit closer to the three, um, but it's not a difficult shot for Mark. Yeah, but once again, he's got to remember to leave an angle on the four to get to the five. I think the cue ball in the middle of the table for the five ball, roughly where it is now, will be a good uh, spot to get to the eight ball. Right there, Jason. No heroics here, just anywhere. You know, a big circle in the middle of the table is good enough. And what Dennis is doing there is he's just using his cue. There's a little bit of a marker, and he knows he doesn't want to go past an imaginary line where he put his cue. And his partner will have a shot. So he's spinning two rails. Needs it to slow down. No, he's lost this. He's lost this by a long way. Somebody's getting excited, and it's that man there. Extension, Extension called. So, we're going to see Mark play this one rail back up, or is he going to go two? He's not at that. And look where the cue ball's landed. It, it, the cue ball should have been way down the table to leave an angle. I thought he would have just clipped that in and come past the nine ball, Chris. Yep, that's what I liked. Hit the hit the rail above the middle pocket. Yes, that was the shot. One rail past the side pocket. Leave yourself a little angle, and uh, this could be a big rack for Team Philippines. The cue ball's close. Just okay. Yeah, it would have been a little bit harsh to scratch, but it could have done. And is this the turning point for the Philippines? We've seen it last night against USA. They were five racks behind last night. The five racks behind now. Extension. Extension called. There's nothing worse than when you're a pool player and you just give an easy rack away. It hurts so much because... Team Estonia know they could be sat in the chair for two, three, four racks. This is a lovely shot. Very nice shot there from Roberto Gomez. This nine ball here to, to make it 6 2 to Estonia. The Philippines. Thanks. I won in the ring. So that was a big mistake for Estonia. It was a chance to extend the lead, but they haven't. The Philippines have pulled on back, and how are we about to see a real game changer in this match? The Philippines have so much history in this tournament. Jeffrey has lost in the final before against Austria. Gomez has also lost in the final a few years ago, so they're no stranger to the final. Now you see the record. Look at that. Semi-finalist in 2008. Twice runners-up, 2010, 2019. Three-time winners of the event, 2006, 9 and 13. So they know what this tournament is all about. 
What I like about breaking. Team Philippines right now is the six two Perhaps down and they're still having fun. So they're not getting too down on themselves. They know that a couple of breaks and uh, you know could be game on if they can get a couple of breaking runs and get themselves back in the match. Yeah, and the way that they break, they could be potting three and four every single break because they do it and with some power. I've cursed them. Commentators curse. Chris, the shot maker, Melian, right on cue. See the wing ball there went pretty high. And, yeah, uh, it looked like he cut break a little bit, didn't it? Yeah, I think... Um, I don't think he hit them terrible. He didn't hit them too square, and that might have affected the, the wing ball not going in there. So can Estonia pull themselves together after that big mistake in the last rack and try and get herself a couple of games closer to the hill? wasn't a million miles away from hitting that three ball. His cue did go left after he struck the one. He's nicely on the two to draw back or top it. The three and four ball next to each other. Yeah, and it's, it's a pretty good layout, this, isn't it? You're just looking at where the balls are and trying to see if we can spot where it might go wrong, where the purple five is. He's sitting pretty to get on that six ball. Yeah, one thing I've noticed about Mark, he does put unintentional spin on the ball. You can see there on that last shot, he spun the ball over mm -hmm. to the left. Extension cord. Or as to the right as we're looking at it. Yeah, now Dennis is faced with this type of shot where, you know, he does throw his body and he moves quite a lot on the shot. So this is a big shot coming up. Yeah, you've just got to cue this, keep still and push the cue through in a straight line. Nice shot there, perfect on the four. Yeah, you, you know Dennis is a great shot maker, he's a great player, but we do see him tend to move a little bit on the shots and uh, sometimes that is not good. Yeah, especially the, the later you go in matches. I think looking at the table, the Philippines have got to hope the seven to the eight is the ball that might go wrong. Yeah, and he's absolutely perfect on this five ball. I mean, I don't know why Mark's telling him to leave the cue ball there. It's, it's blatantly obvious that he wants to leave the, the cue ball there. Just spin this in with a touch of right-hand spin. You've just got to make sure you don't under-hit it or over-hit it. And I mean, that's OK. Pulled yeah. out that shot a little bit there, Carl. Yeah, it's probably going to go two rails. We've got side rail, side rail, and come back out. The ball at the top of the table. It needs to bounce. Whoa. Yeah, and that's a few times he's done that in this match, and... Believe it or not, it's a natural angle to cut the seven in and go in between the eight and nine for the eight in the top left-hand corner pocket. Yeah, Mark's been a little bit unfortunate there, hasn't he? But they're OK. Very nice shot there from Dennis. Like you said, Chris, it was a natural angle to come two rails out behind the eight and leave Mark a nice shot on the eight here and try and get another rack on the board. Yeah, it's clearly visible that he's very nervous. The facial features and the time he's taking to pot a very, very easy eight ball. I think he's a better cueist now, though. I feel like he's been working on his cue action. He looks a little bit more compact. He seems to stay still as opposed to a couple of years ago. And I think they're doing well on this nine ball. Well, it's 7-2. Estonia, the leading team Philippines.
you would be forgiven for thinking the Philippines would be sat in their chairs with a big nice lead one. in this match. But you're wrong, it's Estonia. The 10th bracket. Team Estonia is leading by seven racks to two in the world bracket. Oh, we're going to see Mark Maggie. I was going to say that again, it's Mark Maggi. He, um, he's been cut breaking this full tournament and he has changed sides and he has been hitting it a little bit harder his last break so we're gonna see if he's gonna cut this break or hit it hard and he cut it again and he's got a shot at the two yeah he's gonna need a lot of cue power here. this is a chris melon special this type of shot he's gonna force it round the angles with right hand spin cueing off the rail if he's got a little bit of angle, of course. Yeah, I think it's one of them where he's got to force it with a lot of top spin and try and arc the cue ball around the eight. Yeah, Chris, he's got, definitely got an angle. Um, that's a very difficult shot. Got to produce a lot of cue power on this one. Yeah, I think if you can spin it with right hand spin, I don't think he needs to hit this too hard. I think the spin will do the work. But obviously, it makes the, the pot a lot cold. more difficult. Do you think he can get below the six, or has he got to go through the gap of the six and the nine? Well, the harder he hits it, the more chance he has of hitting the six. So he needs to let the spin do the work on the cue ball. I think he's going to try and get up behind the seven. Um, he's going to go two rails and try and go past the seven. I had. The last shot he looked at was um, trying to get to the middle of the table, but I don't think Mark liked that. Yeah, this is tough. He's digging down on the cue ball. He's got 10 seconds left. Mm, this is really difficult. Yeah, never fancied him for it, to be honest. He was up and down. And look how lucky he's got there. That is unbelievable. Yeah, the, they're running good and they're playing good. It's a dangerous combination, Carl. Yeah, when you're 7-2 up, these things happen, but they just never seem to happen when you're 7-2 down. Yeah, the Philippines will hit this two ball, but where does it end up? Extension. Extension, please. Yeah, not only does Jeff have to hit this two ball, he's got to get it safe. So all the balls are in the open. And they can only hit part of the cue ball. Shot! Oh, what a shot that is. Very nice shot there from Jeffrey De Luna. And that's what these Filipinos are known for, kicking balls. And uh, there you can see it straight in the heart of the pocket. Shot! Yeah, enjoyed that one, but the last time they kicked the ball in out of a snooker, they messed up. Yeah, this is a genuine chance now. It really is. The Filipinos have just got to try and set themselves a genuine target. Maybe get back to 7-5 and just... Ask your opponents a question. I like going two reels below the seven ball here, Christopher. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, playing it above it is, is just mental, really, because you could snook yourself. That's the shot. And like you said, they're coming two reels above the seven is very dangerous. You are, he's got some height on his hair, Jeffrey DeLuna, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got more than Darren Appleton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a beauty. I'm sure Darren's watching. So he's here. <laughs> Obviously, you can't see. He's literally just walked in the <laughs> comms box right on cue there. That is funny. Uh, yeah, I wonder how long it takes both of these guys to do their hair. So, 
Can the Philippines get another game on the board here and try and put a little bit of pressure on Team Estonia? Little tester for Superman. That's his pool nickname. Yeah, and he, uh, he can't reach this one. And he has been known to miss one or two of these in the past. He's got no extension here. Philippines are winning the wreck. Nice shot there from Roberto Gomez to take it to 7-3. And uh, can we see the Team Philippines put a few games together here and try and get themselves back in this match? Well, Albin, that could be huge, couldn't it? It was it just simply had to go in for the Philippines. Yeah, impressive uh, two ball there by Jeffrey and uh, amazing rag. And I think it's really important. Uh, they're still 7-3 down, but we saw already Slovakia today. They were also 7-3 down and man managed to win the match. It's amazing. They're 7-3 down, but they're so entertaining. Yeah, of course. I mean, they probably they, they didn't play a shot for quite a time now and didn't manage out the, the break. So uh, it's all about the next break and hopefully they can run a couple of them. Yeah, huge credit to, to Estonia who have been pretty consistent throughout. Um, how do you see this going now? Well, it's tough to tell. Uh, I think really it's all about the break now for for Philippines. They didn't manage to, to make some balls in the previous break and uh, Mark is playing really well. So I still think Estonia will win this match. OK, thanks, Alpin. Back to the commentators. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Alpin, Mark Matches, in a breath of fresh air. The Philippines are trailing by seven in this three. tournament. And they will break. He's played very well and Estonia well they've become a good team now they've looked a little bit scared over the years but they're certainly be becoming one of the good teams now in this event Jeffrey De Luna will he go full maximum power yeah we're going to see a big break here That is awesome to watch, to be fair, isn't it? He doesn't hold back, does he? That is obscene the stuff. The cue ball was still spinning from that break. That was incredible break there from De Luna. Yeah, I don't know. He hits them so hard and controls that cue ball perfectly. And he has a clear shot on the two ball here. So, nice layout for Team Philippines after that phenomenal break there from Jeffrey De Luna. Yeah, he's one of... Well, he's probably the only player when... He's breaking a lot where he constantly gets like three or four balls on the break. If Jeffrey was playing singles here, he would draw this ball all the way back to the bottom rail, but I think he might just follow it two rails and come out. Yeah, that wasn't a good shot by Roberto. Mm -hmm. he needed a much larger angle on the four ball. Yeah, he's going to see a lot of cue power here from Jeffrey. I'll tell you what, he's the best in the world at that shot. It just makes it look so easy. Yeah, he's got a lot of cue power, and we see there from the break in this, this follow-on shot. We said, didn't we? A little tag, it could be 7 5. That'll just give the Estonians something to think about. Jeffrey's playing on one leg now. Could we see a comeback again from Team Philippines? Philippines are winning the wreck. So. They're slowly, slowly getting back into this match. It's another rack on the board. It's 7 4. Estonia. Well, they've got a few things to think about. Still a healthy lead. And the smiling Jeffrey Deluma. Let's have a look at this break shot. Nicknamed the Bull, 37 years of age. This is his trademark shot in pool. Jumps up in the air. 
and he made three balls as Jason said plays that shot so easy so effortless to get the cue ball zipping back Philippines are winning the rack Team Estonia will be sitting in the chairs thinking they just want another opportunity well they're still smiling and as long as Greyboat is smiling it's good news They'd love to win one of the next two racks, wouldn't they, Estonia, just to get on the hill? Yeah, I think uh, Team Philippines are looking to try and put a couple of racks together and, uh, like you said, set that little target, 7-4, seven, 7-5, seven, and uh, hopefully things change and they can get themselves right back in this game. But like you said as well, Team Estonia want to just win one or two racks, put a little bit of heat back on Team Philippines. The Philippines are breaking, trailing seven foot. So Gomez also has quite a unique break shot. When he pulls the cue back, he sort of lifts his full arm up towards the sky. Yeah, and Jeff stood right behind him, looking at the angle of where he's breaking. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty unusual. I have not seen that before. Oh, it's a wonderful break. It really is. And very unfortunate there, the one ball's jawed in the side pocket three or four times and kind of gone a little bit tricky. Yeah, yeah, good break there and very unfortunate not to have an easier shot on the one. Is there a two-way shot? It's a risky shot. Yeah, I'm just thinking that myself, Carl. Are you thinking banking the one into the corner? Put, put the white on the top rail? Yeah, especially with Jeffrey. He does like to play to the, the TV cameras and well he's looking at the one so it must pass the eight yeah I don't think I'd be shooting this shot not a seven four down like you said he's very good at these little tricky shots with spin well, it looked good all the way down at first didn't it <laughs> Yeah, I don't think he's left this one ball. Been slightly fortunate. Hmm. He's not left this easy for Team Estonia. Yeah, and at first glance, all he can do is kind of bank the one ball to the side rail and try and push the cue ball towards the eight. Try and snooker him behind the nine ball. There's not much more he can do. Extension, please. Yeah, could he bank the one ball towards the six? Yeah, I, I like that shot, Carl. Bank the one to the to the top right corner and uh, try and kill the cue ball down there next to the eight ball and the four ball. Yeah, that's a tough one, that is. He got to time that shot really well. Maybe playing it. I like smashing the one off the bottom rail into the nine at 100 mile an hour. Yeah, oh, I like wow. this shot. What a beautiful shot there from Graybo. Shot, shot, shot of the match. Of the match. Yeah, I, I thought that shot was on. He, he had a look at it first and Mark didn't really like it, but Dennis has pulled a wonderful shot out there. He's actually been a bit unfortunate that he's landed so close to the centre pocket because, as we've seen a few times in this match, the Filipinos kick these balls in for fun. Yeah, this looks like a team effort. You could see Jeffrey's cue there. Yeah, you, you would think he's going to go pretty close to this. Yeah, no, see this You can hear Jeffrey there. Begging it in. And, uh, wide open table here for Team Estonia to get herself on the hill. Yeah, Jeffrey's not happy there. He's just giving Roberto a, a right look. Well, it's tough at the top if your partner's angry with you for not pointing that one ball. If I could speak Filipino, I think he was saying to him, why didn't you spin it more? <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right. Well, just looking at these balls and where they're sat, every ball is in a perfect position. They don't really have to play anything fancy, and this is to get them on the hill. 
Oh, he's over it, this one. He just pulled up just in time. Looked like he, he put a little bit too much stroke on that. Yeah, and this was the reaction, look, Jeffrey. Well, he's not happy, is he? I mean, he was hooked, Jeffrey. Relax, pal. I think he was, Jeffrey was telling before, make sure you spin it a little bit. And uh, Roberto really Thank didn't you, listen okay. to what he was saying, yeah. so I think he got a little mm -hmm. something in his ear. Nicely onto the six ball there and got nothing to do to get onto the seven. The table seems to be bouncing again. I think the there's cold and then it's, the AC is on and then it comes the heat comes on and a little bit of both makes the table play a little bit differently. And uh, nice shot there from Mark. Yeah, and he's got to remember he's got to leave an angle on this on this eight ball. I think I'd be playing this off two rails off the side and the bottom rail to make sure you leave an angle. Yeah, Dennis Grave, the more experienced of the two. There you see the bounce off the second rail. These balls was all sat there to be taken. Taken is what they've been done. This simple nine ball. To put Dennis and Mark on the hill. It's eight four. Philippines. Well, they need the last five.
Team Estonia are on the brink of the semi-finals. Two years ago, when this event was last held due to COVID, well, they fell out pretty much and they weren't best of friends. The best of friends now though, they lead Philippines 8-4. Yeah, Carl, I can remember that um, sitting in the crowd about five seats apart, just looking at each other like they wanted to kill themselves. Oh, it was brilliant. It was TV gold. What a break from Graybo. They're going to have a shot here. Unless the two ball spoils, no, it's fine. It's a chance to win the match, boys. A little tap on the table there from his partner. They have really broken well, haven't they? They've controlled the cue ball well every break and they've given themselves the best possible chance. Yeah, they're, they'll be feeling the pressure here, Carl, getting themselves over the lines. This is a massive win for them, especially yesterday after beating Team GBA. Yeah, and I think if the two ball passes a four into the corner where the nine ball is, I think you've got to play for that. Because if you play for it in the side pocket, you need to be dead straight on the two ball. Extension call. Yeah, Chris, I like your shot. The two ball goes, so get yourself over to the left hand side and everything should be plain sailing from there. a snatchy one there he uh, didn't push the cue through nicely on that one yeah I don't agree with what Dennis is doing here you know concentrating your jump shot your partner's played well in this match was it an easy shot focus on this one I think there was a wrong shot there Carl. I thought he was going to top that ball with left hand spin and come out natural what price the nine ball might go in? 100 to 1. Yeah, had a chance. He played a great jump shot, to be fair, and thicker contact on the nine, it would have been, would have been in. Nice jump shot, though. Yeah, so it's decision time now. Yeah, what do you do here, Carl? This is a real tricky one. Like trying to play the four ball off the rail and let the cue ball in mind the nine. It's played up and down. Oh, I don't like that shot. That's a kind of a nothing shot there. He didn't know what to do. And the time was running out. Yeah, I like just pushing the four ball up to the top rail there and uh, trying to get the cue ball close to the nine. Yeah, this will be interesting now. If the, the Filipinos can just hold themselves together in this rack, that'll put a little bit of pressure back over. And the break and run to 8-6. You just never know. And they've made the four. Cue ball looks to be OK. As long as it's not straight. Ooh. He's just going to have to take... Oh, it's medicine and just float this ball in and get it back to roughly where it is now. Yeah, for me here, Jason, you've just got to pot the five ball and just leave yourself a shot at the six. Just give yourself an opportunity. Yeah, so that gap in between the seven and nine is the target, and it's perfect. And, uh... If they can get out on this rack, it's Jeffrey De Luna to break. Nice shot there from Jeffrey. And uh, three balls here to close out this rack and get another one on the board. that nice and positive because he had to get the cue ball over so Jeffrey had an angle on this eight because he will be playing the nine ball down the rail 
he won't be playing in the side that'll be too tight and of course the corner pockets oh no Jeffrey De Luna you need this eight ball to stop well it's a chance for Estonia come on please it's come Dennis on. Graves shot Dennis this is your chance pal you knock this in you get on the nine you beat the Philippines that was a bad shot weren't it Jay that from Jeffrey on the eight I had a little feeling he was going to throw one in there, you know that? He's been queuing pretty good this tournament, and uh, yeah, that was a bad one, Carl. And it's there, he needs to miss the nine. It has missed the nine. Needs a big bounce. This is okay. He's got to stay still. Mark Madge, you have played your part in this team. You've looked a new man this year. Just stay still, cue it in. Yeah, this is a big shot. He's he's going long into the corner here and puts a little bit more pressure on it, but I fancy him to get it. Yeah, it's playing into a big pocket from where the nine is. Oh, he's missed it. Is this drama unfolding? Why hit the ball so hard though, Cal? You've got to play it into the rail. It makes the pocket so much bigger. And One we saw him lift. Pal. Pressure. Extension calls. Yeah, that was, uh, he was very jumpy on that shot too. Yeah, now the Philippines are faced with... Well, it's a horrible shot, isn't it? So, they might get away with it here. This is not guaranteed. Playing it in the top right-hand corner, and he's going to play it at nice speed. I don't think he's going to hit it too hard. If he misses it, he might get away with it and leave a, a bank for Team Estonia. Yeah, and this is a probably three out of ten. Yeah, he's looked at the top left, but I agree with you, Joe. I think... I don't know, they're just this type of shot there's just a favoured pocket. He's jacked up as well, so he's not he's not messing around there. He's gonna fire this one. Well, this is super tough. This to stay in the tournament. Well, I can't believe the way he's played that. He's got a good cue ball. He's, he's got a good cue ball, Jason, but if you're gonna go for it, go for it. Don't be playing with the cue in the air and just go for it one hundred percent. Yeah, I think playing in the other corner there, like I said, and giving himself the cue ball would have landed in the same position, but the nine ball, if he missed it, would have went to that side rail. So now it's Dennis's chance to win the match. His partner's already missed the nine. This nine for the semi-finals. It's there. Oh. It's clean as a whistle. Dennis Grave with a huge shout. Team Estonia beat Great Britain. A. Now they beat the Philippines. Wow, what a match. That was incredible, that last rack there. And, uh, you know, Jeffrey threw the eight in there. And then Mark's missed the nine. And Roberto's missed the nine. And Dennis played a brilliant shot on the nine ball there to close that game out. And, uh, congr